Hello, and welcome to Geek Street Cafe. So before we get started today, I want to tell you some exciting news. Usually you'll see this lovely face in the back of, uh, of the set here, but today he is not necessary because we have the digital version of him in the hey, back of the set today. Hey, the next greatest thing. Next greatest Speaking thing. Speaking of next greatest thing, what are we talking about today? We are talking about the mysterious Nintendo NX console, now named the Nintendo Switch. So Charles is here to talk about it because he's done some research and we're going to kind of go over a couple of the big details. So Charles, let's talk about the inspiration behind it because it didn't well, come from the main president, right? It came from the prior one. Exactly. Before he died, the previous president of Nintendo, Satoru Iwata, wanted a major push for the mobile field, the mobile platform, because he could see how video games were continuously moving towards uh, the mobile arena. So that is kind of where the idea came from for the Switch. Mm -hmm. And it has continued since then, and hopefully it will not disappoint. Hopefully. So in the original design of the Nintendo NX, I believe they had it intended it for to like combine its uh, its abilities to make one greater system. Right. It was really weird. They had this idea. This was years ago when it was still called the NX, mm -hmm. where they had this idea. Right. Right. <laughs> um, the only thing we really knew about it was that they had this idea, like Nintendo, always trying to shift things around and have new ideas. Very interesting idea to basically link all of the NX systems in a giant network so that when one system wasn't being used and was in standby mode, other systems could borrow processing power from it so they could handle heavier loads right. and uh, higher res graphics and such, right. which is a really great idea, but I think logistically would be a nightmare. So privacy, they probably well, move... The, the privacy right. laws would go nuts over something like yes, that. Yes! Like, <laughs> no... So, but I'd still like to see that sometime in the future because that's a very smart idea. Anyway, yeah, just it's just um, cloud computing and the idea that you can use a mass system to um, exactly. To um, so, right. so let's go over kind of what we know so far. Right. Um, so if you guys don't know yet, um, I'm going to put a link in the description for the release video on Nintendo's official website, just so you can get like. Go ahead and pause this video. I know I tell you that every time Charles is here with us, but you get great information. Um, but pause the video, watch that, because that'll catch you up with just what it looks like, kind of what the controllers and what look it do. like. And yeah, and kind of what it does. So after you do that, rejoin us, and, uh, and we'll be writing right here patiently. So welcome back. We're yes. glad you're here. Um, After watching the video, you better watch it. You better watch that video. Uh, so um. yes, of course, from moving away from the idea of it having the cloud computing component, now it's all about its mobility mm -hmm. and the fact that you can take it pretty much anywhere. Just about. Just about. So, so. the great thing about the uh, this console is that it does have that dual functionality. So. In the idea that, you know, you can, like you saw in the video, you can slide that tablet looking uh, part of it into the console and allow you to play on the TV or slide those joysticks on there, which they have an official name, don't they? They have Joy Cons. Joy Cons. Called Joy Cons. So first there was the Nunchucks, now there's the Joy Cons. Right. Um, but there's something special about those Joy Cons, especially in the patent information. Charles, you have something in interesting about yeah. the Joy Con system. Let's talk about some hardware. And we can go ahead and start with the controllers themselves, the Joy-Cons. Uh, what we do know, actually, is that they have possible add-on hardware that will be on the way, mm -hmm. uh, depending on which game you're playing. I know I was looking at some renderings for specific Joy-Cons designed around Splatoon. One was Resident Evil. Mm -hmm. I think there's some for Mario, plat uh, Mario games as well. Go figure. Uh, but also, even more interestingly than that, is the particularly the right component of the Joy-Con controller. There's this idea in the patents. Now, of course, this doesn't mean it's going to make it to the final product, but this idea in the patents that the right side of the Joy-Con will be able to project an image onto a flat surface, such as your hand, to be manipulated in the game itself. 
and also serve uh, some motion sensing capabilities. Mm -hmm. uh, for instance, there's the idea uh, of this short range infrared sensor in the controller that can detect gestures such as pointing and other hand movements on top of the gyroscopic and motion sensing capability that the controller has barred from previous iterations of the Wii U and the Wii. Right. So right. that just the Joy-Con system itself allows almost nunchuck like capabilities. Um, right. Which we can get similar to Wiimote in, in some ways. Yeah, kind of like a Wiimote. And then but also that that projection concept which Yes. Which like, few people are talking about, but it is in the patents. It is. And it is very interesting. So and, and I'm I'm kind of curious to see what you could do with that, but I guess that's something that they will have up their sleeve in the future. So right. The tablet portion of the Switch, let's get into the hardware of that. It's it's actually sure. comparable to today's consoles, right? Right, right. Now, if you want to talk about the system as a whole, imagining it docked at your console next to your TV, your whole entertainment system, it is purportedly comparable to a PS4. Mm -hmm. Not PS4 Pro, and we don't know this for certain. This is unofficial. But it is rumored to have a similar power capability as the PS4. And that all comes from its NVIDIA Tegra mm -hmm. series uh, ch uh, chipset that it has in it. It's actually SOC system on a chip. It's all incorporated on there. And that's designed with mobile platforms in mind. But the interesting thing about this is that it is a customized version of that that uses similar architecture to the most powerful GeForce graphic cards that NVIDIA makes. Mm -hmm. So it's still able to pack quite a punch. The question is whether or not that power will transfer when you take it mobily. Now, of course, we do see in the video them playing the remastered Skyrim with the mobile component. So right. supposedly it's supposed to maintain most of that power but the big issue there is battery life. And that's yes. a question that everybody's asking that apparently we don't have any answers to yet. Yeah. Which is and, a problem. Well, and it may be that they're holding out, I just thought about this, but they may be holding out on that battery life question because the lithium system and even, I mean, Tesla just bought the, uh, the battery wall factory and we're constantly upgrading. Right. By the time that they release the console in second or third quarter of next year, Right. They'll, they'll have the newest and best battery in there, and they'll be able to Right, and that, that, that's probably true in, in a lot of different ways. We won't know for certain until January 13th when they have their media briefing that they'll cover a lot specifically about the Switch. Right. Uh, but all we know right then, all right now until then, is that nothing is really known about the battery. <laughs> Now, some other interesting things about the tablet component itself, slide your Joy-Con onto there. It is a 6.5 inch, I believe, display running at 720p. And of course, everybody's asking, well, does it have touchscreen capability? Is it like the Wii U? Or does it have similar properties of the 3DS? And the question is yes, but better. The answer is okay. yes, but better. Uh, because the 3DS, the Wii U, all used resistive touchscreens, which took pressure it just to requires, activate, and they yeah, it exactly force to, to activate right. And it's touchscreen. not that accurate, really. But we now know this is a certain fact that for the Nintendo Switch, it would be a multi-touch resistive display on the tablet component, mm -hmm. and multi-touch means that it can handle up to ten digits. So all the fingers you've got, you're going to be using them, which, which is pretty great and a large step forward for Nintendo. Yeah, and I mean, it's, it gives them a lot of creative freedom to be able to handle a lot of different things. That's right. Um, I don't know why, but the first thing that comes to my mind is they need to release a new Metro game, and the way you change weapons is actually making the hand formations. But that anyways, actually would be pretty cool. because that would make me that, <laughs> Right. That can incorporate either the touchscreen or the sensor in the right part of the controller. Right. So... Um, but at any rate, so that's some of the hardware down. Let's talk about their what they have going for them. Because the Wii and the Wii U, their kind of their struggle was they didn't have good games. Like they had good games, but not 
to the extent right. that Sony and Microsoft do. So what do they have going for them in this new release? Well, like you said, the first two years or so of the Wii's release saw a lot of great core titles being released and some third-party publishers having interest in the system. But after that, it just started to fizzle out. And we saw a lot of that same sort of problem with the Wii U. Mm -hmm. But we do know for a fact, so far we have 48 third parties 48 third-party publishers working with Nintendo signed on to uh, be in the long haul working on new games. Uh, And that's including publishers such as Activision, Mm -hmm. Bethesda, Capcom, EA, Sega, Square Enix, Ubisoft, all of these guys. And they – what we do know so far is that they will be working on games. Some of these launch titles, some of them not – Games such as Zelda Breath of the Wild, which we're all looking forward to, by the way. It has a game map seven times the size of Skyrim, which is amazing. Uh, we have new Sonic titles. We have new Just Dance titles, new Dragon Quest titles. And as you can see in the video, the release video, we see some Super Mario demonstrated. We know some Mario Kart's on the way, Splatoon. And, of course, everybody's talking about the remastered Skyrim. Right. Which is going to be a big hit for them if they can catch that one. Um, Absolutely. Also, I just thought about something else, too. It would be awesome to be able to play Doom globally. Um, that would be amazing. That would be nice. So, as far as where this falls into their lineup, this is going to be taking the place of their new main console. Like, their, this is going to be their new uh, head console system. But is right. it going to be taking any kind of precedence over their mobile consoles at all and that's another big question for the nintendo switch they have specifically stated that it has at the forefront a home system that has mobile capability now that is not going to interfere with their ds systems their mobile system still is ds so they're going to continue working on those and that's going to continue to be their primary 3d their, their primary mobile system Right. Uh, but it will still have that capability. Okay. So um, I guess this will be our last question, but how do you see this impacting the future of Nintendo for, for good or for ill, uh, depending on how people take this console? Well, they've certainly garnered some attention with the uniqueness of the system. Definitely. The big question is whether or not they will be able to hold that attention for producers, publishers, and game studios. It is very encouraging to hear that the 48 publishers have already signed on right uh so hopefully we will see lots of good core titles yes as well as lots of good third-party titles as well definitely and, so and hopefully hope- it's a bright future for the system and we'll do a lot to revitalize nintendo's kind of fizzling out console yeah. And, uh, and that's something that they're gonna have series. to get over they're gonna have to oh they're gonna have to overcome the doubt hump that a lot of uh, core gamers and buyers are going to have in the beginning right. because they've been burned ish twice with the two previous systems. So if they can persevere and those third party developers can hold on over that hump, if, if there is one, I mean, they may just be like, it may blow all of our minds and they're sold out first day, but right. Um, as long as we can hang on for that first year and developers are continuing to focus on it as a, as a core system, I think this could bring Nintendo back into the limelight if they can keep that rolling. Hopefully which, so. Which their new CEO um, is really focusing on bringing Nintendo into the modern era and kind of leaving a lot of the old stuff behind. So I think he's the perfect person to be able to take care of some of that kind of stuff. Um, Pokemon Go being one of the many things that he's had a hand in and seeing how that affected things. So um, I think that is the Nintendo Switch in a box. Like uh, We'll definitely keep you guys updated on the Facebook page um, for you know new updates if we do hear about things like battery life or price because that's something else that we don't know yet. Right. Um, but before we close out the episode, we have our random factoid of the day. And Charles, yeah. we has that one for us today. Random bit of the day. Some of you probably don't know this. I'd like to bet most of you don't. Mm-hmm. Nintendo was not founded 
as a video game company. It wasn't even founded as a toy company to begin with. It was founded in 1889 as a manufacturer for playing cards, specifically Hamafuda playing cards, which means flower cards. And it's a card game involving 12 suits for the 12 seasons and four of each card. So sounds pretty complicated, but also sounds pretty fun. They didn't even actually... Exactly. (laughs) They didn't even start playing making video games until the 1970s and that was before the 1960s where they decided to market themselves more to children with toys and since then it's just kind of exploded interesting so nintendo's a heck of a lot older than you might think right (laughs) so thank you guys for joining us today on geek street cafe if you like what you hear make sure that you hit that subscribe button down below make a comment make sure you like it and uh and also join our facebook like we had said before so you can keep up with some of the things that we post um in the next couple episodes, you might see Charles in the flesh instead of in digital. So that will be awesome. Look forward to seeing that. And I uh, want to let you guys know that this episode has been brought to you by the uh, Triangle Insurance and Associates. These guys have supported us, been behind us, and given us the... Uh, the energy that we need to make sure that you get the content that you like so make sure to go visit their website down below and take a look if you're interested in something that they might have to offer thank you guys so much for joining us we will see you next time stay geeky bye bye